Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight to look at the 2025 Mission Center preliminary budget. Um, I just want to start off since the cover page is from me and the packet and my decisions kind of framed what Jessica needed to do to form this budget. So as I've shared here, I've asked uh, Apostle Mackay to uh, be in the process of identifying a new Mission Center president with the first presidency. I've been in the role for nine years now and going on 10 and felt that it's time for me to, to move on and also to bring new leadership to the Mission Center. So I don't know if they'll have a recommendation at the fall conference or not, uh, or if it will be sometimes next year, but by next um, July, the end of June, I would like to, to move on from the MCP role. And given that, I've outlined um, my sense that the Mission Center should consider trying to increase the budget to staff three full-time positions. I've been in a part-time role since the pandemic and that's worked for me, but I, I don't think that's gonna be reasonable for a person coming into the MCP role. Um, it could be a team, it could be one individual, and I don't know what that will look like, but um, that's kind of what I proposed uh, was that it be a three full-time position budget so that they'd have flexibility to fill that. And given that, then Jessica and I and the staff have worked on this proposal. So I'll turn it over to Jessica from here to go through the packet, and then we can take questions on specific items and then more questions at the end. So my letter at the beginning was just explaining what is in this packet. Um, so we'll go ahead and start um, with the June 30th financial statements. So you can see where we're at currently. Um, income is a little lower than what we would like, like to see. It generally is this time of year, um, but especially with those envelope contributions, we would like to see more. Finances are on track. You will see that the um, office supplies line is over budget. That's because we had to order checks this year. Um, we only have to order checks. Well, I started 2018 and we haven't had to order them until now. So um, and then I did get a question about the negative amount with the disciple and leadership development. We had used that line for the Kirtland retreat. So we were getting donations to that before we had got all the expenses. So the expenses come out in July. So going forward, you won't see a negative number there. Are there any questions on, on the budget statement? Not seeing any, if we wanna to go to the balance sheet. So starting here at the top, you'll see where our money is, if it's in the bank, if it's in AIP. And then some amounts that we're still, that we're expecting to receive. Um, a lot of it, it has to do with payroll and the, the way we process payroll and then build the congregation. So there's always a little lag um, in there. There's always some amount. The other notes receivable, Beaverton and Harrison have sold. So once all their final transactions are done, um, you won't see those numbers there. If you want to go down towards the bottom, the bottom half there with our fund balances, you'll see for those funds where we started at the beginning of the year, what income and expenses we've had, those totals, and then where we were at June 30th. I'll wait in case there are any questions on that. So 
So I did just get a question. The accounts receivable um, CMC, that's the Campus Ministry Center. So um, Journey House had a loan that we, a mission center, um, essentially paid that loan. And then at some point, um, the Campus Ministry Center will be paying back that or if um, in the future we decide to sell it or something, the Mission Center will get those funds back. But that's not, I'm not saying that there is a plan right now to sell it, just to make that clear. Any other questions? Not seeing any for our current financial state. You want to go to the next page? This is the same document has that has appeared the last few years. I'm just giving a description of what those funds that were on the prior, prior page are. Um, and here is the pre preliminary proposed budget that we have worked on. Like Dan said, it's based around a lot of um, on the staffing and the need to go to three full-time positions. So because we adjusted the salary and benefits line and increased it, uh, we then had to look at how we were going to increase the funding to meet that expense. So I'll just go down the income from the top. Congregational support, that's with a 10% increase. We've asked congregations that if they're able to increase their mission center support. The envelope contribution level, that's what people give through the and the discipleship and leadership development and congregation mission expansion grants. Um, there are, we can take those directly from a fund instead of the operating fund if we have any of those grants. Typically in the past, we have taken from the fund and moved it into the operating budget, but we can just do it directly if necessary. Someone just asked about the volunteer travel, travel support. Um, so that is available. Sorry, they, we're doing Bible school and the children are right outside the door now. Um, the volunteer travel support is available for um, volunteers who travel, volunteers who are doing ministry, sometimes it's used, um, not often, but such as the, I'm drawing a blank on what they're called. Um, We've intended like for mission center council members. That's what, yeah. If we have a pastor vacancy that, you know, I might need to send a designee to fill in as pastor for a period or handle a situation in my stead. Or, so someone who's doing a, a mission center ministry that needs reimbursement for travel. So are there any questions of that so far? I know we've got to go back and talk more about the investment earnings and how we hope to fund that. Okay, so if you look through the packet, it did provide um, it did it did provide some um, sorry, I keep losing some information. and the idea that we have um, agreed upon to try to raise those inf investment pool um, 
earning. I saw you moving it, it's over. So if you look at the very bottom of the page that's in front of you, under investment earnings permission support, typically we calculate it at a 4% or less of the operating investment fund balance. The amount that we have budgeted for 2025 is based on the, that 4%, but also growing the investment fund, fund by a million dollars by the end of this year. So if it reaches 2.1 million, we expect that 4% would be $84,000. It seems like a lofty goal and I have received some, some emails about um, that amount and how likely congregations are going to be to, for us to reach that amount. Um, I will say that some of those funds would come from congregations who decide to give. Uh, some we we all will also be getting from the sale of some of our buildings, um, such as the when the final transactions for Beaverton and Harrison, they each have some amount that will be going into that fund. I'm gonna. Yes, yeah, so there was a question on how that will be raised. So we took a look at congregation finances, um, figures that we had from past inspections, figures from end of the year uh, financial statements, and we looked at the affiliate investment pool. There is a significant amount of money, especially in the investment pool, that is sitting there. And our hope is that some will decide to give from those funds. Dan, do you wanna say more about that? Sure, so again, as Jessica outlined, the goal would be roughly a million dollars raised over the next year. And as she said, you know, we know we have some money already coming from two congregations that are in the process of getting their final net proceeds. Um, the most recent number Jessica gave me for across all congregations in the affiliate investment pools, congregations hold just over $3.5 million in Michigan. So when we say we are looking for a million total, it doesn't all have to come from that. We certainly have the capacity in our congregations, that's just in the investment pools. Many congregations have a local checking or savings or CDs with their local bank or credit union. And we have, we don't have accurate numbers on all those month to month because we get those at the end of each year from congregations. But we know uh, that congregations have significant savings locally as well across that. So there's definitely capacity um, and then on top of that, we have congregations that have notified us they're considering the sale of their building because they're no longer able to maintain it um, or not finding repairs to make sense. And we've had several buildings sell in the past few years or vacant pieces of land attached to buildings. So through those combinations, along with congregations that gave through special offerings or other line items like they did for Bridge of Hope, you know, many congregations were kind of in the pattern of giving that extra piece. Um, we feel pretty confident that continuing that idea of funding an investment fund um, for the Worldwide Church can now apply to the Mission Center. And over the next year, we, we think we could reach that $1 million goal to get the investment fund to $2.1 million. We don't know for sure. Uh, again, we'll look and see how many commitments we get this cycle. So all of you are having your business meetings, you know, this month and next. We'll see what commitments we have there. We'll have a better sense on the final numbers from Beaverton and Harrison, 
few congregations might be considering some actions this fall. So we think by conference we'll have a better sense of what the you know pledges are, so to speak, towards that one million dollars, and if we can forecast getting that one million by the end of next year as planned. If not, then we will have to you know come to to the conference with a different proposal. We'll have to lower that investment earnings and see if we think we can get it in another place or um, you know, reduce expenses somewhere else. Are there any questions on any of that? Jessica, there was a question in the chat um, about congregational support, asking how many congregations support the Mission Center budget. Most congregations do. There's only a few that do not. I don't have an exact number. You no, know, we do publish that list in the fall conference packet. So we have it from last year and we do pull that together once we get all the commitments. So you will see that in the fall conference materials, what the pledges we get anyhow by that time. I can follow up and give you an exact percentage if, if you want me to, Kathy. Um, I just saw the other one. Um, I'll work on I'll work on getting that number while we're here. I've got to pull up a different sheet to get to it. So. I will take, there's one from, uh, that says, the congregations are in old buildings, buildings and the investment pools are for the replacement and repairs to the buildings. And giving is down because of membership decline. Why do we need to have that total? So again, getting that, that total, the 2.1 million would give us the budget amount of the investment pool earnings at a 4% rate. As Dan said, if we don't get that amount, we will have to look and adjust, um, adjust the budget. It may mean trying to increase income some other way. It may be having to lower the expenses. Yeah, I've, I've been asked in recent years, just myself, and even at conference, what would it take to get to three full-time positions. And this is that proposal. So in some sense, this is us um, showing all of you, this is what it would cost to have three full-time Mission Center employees, a president, a financial officer, and an invitation support minister are the three positions outlined by World Church leaders. Um, and so if the Mission Center wants to support that level of staffing, then this is the cost. And here's a, a proposal on how to fund it. Um, but, you know, we rely on commitments and support and our investments. And so we'll, as all years, we'll wait until after September 15th to see what the commitments are and then adjust to that. And then, of course, the conference, you know, delegates can change it again as they have in years past. So this is our proposal to show you how much it would cost, what it could look like, where, and we're just telling you where those funds could come from. Uh, if congregations wanted to um, give. And we'll see what the body you know, desires to do with that. We don't need to have three full-time positions. It's certainly up to the, the body. And we could have a full-time mission center president without three full-time positions. The other you know, positions could be different levels. 
did see a question on how many congregations there are currently 63 congregations and one emerging congregation in the mission center. For this year, the commitment amounts, there were only three congregations who did not have any mission support commitment budgeted. The average is just about $1,550, so $1,550. We have some congregations that can only afford very little and we have others who are blessed with more funds and give generously. Any other questions? There is a narrative provided starting at the bottom of that page that explains some of those different categories and what those funds are used for. And then that packet ends with the form that we ask CFOs or pastors to turn in, sharing their amount, their commitment amount for next year. And we used we use those um, to look at what we can expect in mission support or towards those other ministry categories and see if we have to make some adjustments before um, we bring it to Mission Center Conference as well. That's all that I have, unless there are any questions. I don't know if there's more that you want to share, Dan. Well, I can just remind everyone to mark November 1st, 2nd, 3rd as the weekend for the fall conference. It's the first weekend in November, as we traditionally had it. We do have Saginaw Valley State University reserved for Saturday. So we've been there in years past. We'll be returning to that space. We will just have the Saturday portion there. Um, the Sunday morning worship will most likely be at Saginaw, and we're still working on if we might have a Friday night reception and preparation session, um, perhaps at Bay City or Saginaw congregation. So we'll just be at the university on Saturday, and those details will come up. I basically check in Saturday morning, probably starting around 8, conference likely starting at 9, uh, having a lunch break and then ending around five. So nine to five, we do plan to still have uh, as a hybrid conference. So you can join uh, either in person or through Zoom as we have in the past few years. And we are still using the delegate policy. So in addition to deciding your commitments for next year, you should be electing delegates to the Mission Center Conference. Um, we'll be getting the website up and running here in the next week or two. We have to rebuild some things on our new web page, but we'll get all the fall conference information up here. So pastors have those links to submit delegates. You have the form to send your commitments to Jessica. Those are kind of the main items, the, uh, the, the deadlines leading up to conference, um, October... Fifth is the deadline for delegates four weeks before conference and October 3rd is the deadline for legislation. So we have not received any resolutions from congregations. 
on any topics. Also, if any of your congregations have a proposal, have those submitted by October 3rd. We do have uh, one resolution from last year's conference on plant-based menus that will be coming back from the committee it was referred to with whatever recommendations they have. But otherwise, we'll have the standard items um, sustaining officers as they're recommended by the First Presidency, sustaining any leaders that those officers have, adopting a budget, um, electing campground board members, and will this year will be an election for World Conference delegates in 2025. Those are the business items we know about at this time. Okay, well, thanks everyone. I'll stop the recording, but I'll stick around for a little longer if you have any other questions you'd like to ask while we're still here.